why don't you come out to LA and uh, let me take you around? Okay. Natalie has got herself a second date and she's very happy. For now, because her happiness is going to be very short-lived. More on that in a second. So we join Natalie a few weeks after her last date with Josh. If you missed the video in which I covered that, I'll include a link down in the description below. At the time, that date seemed to be going really well. But when Natalie found out that Josh has two kids with two different women, that seemed to be a deal breaker for her. In fact, she went from saying this was the best time she's had since arriving in America to within seconds right before our eyes, acting like she couldn't stand to be in the same room as him. I just on this visit, it was one of the best time I had in US since I arrived. Today? Today. I'm Thank glad, you. I'm glad to be a part of it. Really? So I have two kids with uh, two different women. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh. What's the matter? Now look, as lots of people pointed out in the comments for that video, dating a guy with two kids, especially when there's two different mothers involved, certainly isn't for everyone, and I've got no issues with Natalie if she doesn't want to get involved with that. But what I didn't like about the whole situation was just how frankly rude she became. Had she turned around and said, look, Josh, thank you. I had a great day, but I'm not sure this is right for me. Perhaps I need a bit more time to think about this. That would have been the right way to handle things. But instead, when she acts personally insulted, well, I'm sorry, that's just not cool. There was no need for her to be so rude. She just had a great day with the guy. She should have at least ended it on polite terms. Manners cost nothing after all. And in in this episode, we learn that since that date, Natalie's had some time to think about things. She realizes that maybe she was indeed a bit too hasty in judging Josh. Me and Josh haven't seen each other since our last date because Josh lives in LA, but we've been talking by text. It still bothers me he has two kids from two different women, but I have some time to think about it. I like him a lot. I do. So she meets up with her friend Yolanta to get her nails done and tell her all about Josh. So what is that happy, happy face today about? I don't know, just I feel like I met someone special. Really? And when Yolanta asks for more information, she tells her that she really had a great time on their first date together. But when I was on a date with him, I felt like we both like 15 because we had fun. He makes me smile. <laughs> But hold your horses, Yolanta. Don't go searching for wedding outfits just yet. He has two kids. He has two kids. Mm -hmm. Is he gonna have one more? I don't know. You didn't ask him about the kids? If he had no. One. Bearing in mind that the last time we saw Yolanta, Natalie was crying about how badly she wanted her own kids. So Yolanta understandably asks Natalie, well, have you raised this issue with him? Does Josh want any more kids in the future? To which Natalie explains. When I went on a date with Josh, I wouldn't ask him if he wants a child because I was scared that he would say no to me and I wasn't ready to hear it. And Natalie also goes on to explain that besides the kids thing, she also has some other concerns. Is he talking to you? Yeah, we talk, but he never texts me good morning or good night. Or oh, how was your day? Like, it's simple, but it makes you feel connected. Oh, you're looking for a man with manners, general courtesy. Oh, the irony. Given how bratty she acted during that first date, I can't really blame Josh for maybe being a bit withdrawn, maybe not being the polite gentleman. When Yolanta suggests that perhaps you just need to tell him that this is what you expect, Natalie tells us. I do feel insecure with Josh right now because he's uh, in his life and sometimes he remembers about me and he writes me something. But I want him to text me more and I need his attention. And aside from all of that, there's one other big issue. Josh owns a modeling company. He's constantly around beautiful women. He likes to party, which leads Yolanta to question, how would Natalie cope with that lifestyle? Oh, he can text you or tell you whatever he wants. And then two hours, you don't even know which house he's in or where he's at. 
just be careful. So with all of those thoughts running through her head, Natalie arranges for a call with Josh. She tells us that they haven't spoken in a few days, but she's convinced there might be something there. And she wants to explore that provided she doesn't have to fight for his attention. Me and Josh haven't talked to each other for several days, but still there is something about us that might work. But he works in the entertainment industry, he's surrounded by women, and I don't know to compete for a man hard. <sighs> the call starts with a fake smile in three, two, one, and then she leads with a compliment. You look good, your hair looks good. Oh, my hair looks good. But despite starting nicely, in less than a minute, Josh can tell that something's not quite right. So what have you been up to? I don't know. You don't know? What's on your mind? And that's when Natalie comes clean. She says, I genuinely like you, but... I generally, gen genuinely like you. But you could ask me how is my day and how I am. And you never do. Now, at this point in the conversation, if this was anyone else, they'd probably leave some time for Josh to respond, right? Well, not Natalie. Instead, she launches into one of her infamous monologues. Like in my country, a man has to show his interest and is he accepted or no? I'm not American girl, don't, rem don't uh, remember, I'm Ukrainian girl. Poor Josh is forced to defend himself and he says, well, my lifestyle is probably very different to what you're used to. Maybe maybe my life a little bit, my, my lifestyle is a little different than maybe what you're used to. You have to keep in mind that I'm committed to my children. I'm committed to my businesses. And I'm glad he spells that out to her. He literally says, my kids will come first, then my businesses, and by the way, I have a party lifestyle. Like he's not holding anything back. And you've got to respect that because now Natalie knows the truth. It's for her to decide. But Josh does say, I'd like to hang out with you, spend some more time with you, kind of see uh, where this goes with you. How about we do something soon? Like what? Why don't you come out to LA and uh, let me take you around? While she tries to play it cool, Natalie can barely hide her excitement at that thought. Okay. And their call ends with Josh asking her to blow him a kiss and Natalie responding. All right, how about a little blow kiss goodbye? That's it. <laughs> I will give you a kiss when I meet you. How about that? Deal. And after the call ends, Natalie can barely contain her excitement. I'm excited. Josh invited me to LA. After leaving Mike and going through all this disaster, it's kind of brave to try to start something new, but I'm doing it. Speaking of her ex, Mike, the guy she's still legally married to, it's funny she should bring him up because at the end of this episode, we get a sneak peek of what's to come in the next episode, which will be the end of season tell-all. And from the sneak peek that we're given, it looks like Mike, who last we heard was still financially supporting her, is going to bring Natalie crashing right back down to earth. Next time on 90 Day Fiance, the single life tell-all. Have you decided to file divorce papers? Yes. You can't do this to me. You made your bed, now you gotta lay in it. <laughs> I don't know if I can go through this hell anymore, I can't. Fuck him. <laughs> It definitely looks like there's going to be a lot of drama on that tell-all. So if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss any of my 90 Day Fiancé updates. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.